So let's trace these two paths through our excitation table. So we start off here where x1 and x2 were 0 and y1 and y2 were 0. That's this state. And then x1 changes to a 1. In a synchronous sequential network, what we would do is draw and talk ourselves through it like this. This is our present state. Our inputs are moving us over to here. So this is going to be our next state. And when the clock hits, this next state becomes our present state. The next step would be our clock moves us over to this row. And this is our next state. And when the clock hits, it becomes our present state. How do we think about this if there is no clock? How do we talk ourselves through this? So at the excitation level, even though the table looks the same, our self-talk through it is totally different. What we do is we focus on the stable state. Here, this is our starting point, not here. And as soon as our input changes, in this case x1 changes to a 1, we attempt to move to this stable state. And in this case it is stable and we stay there. So that's why it's 0, 0, 0, 0. So there's no change. This table is the same for both the se synchronous sequential network and the asynchronous sequential network. But here's where it gets a little bit different. When we change x2 to a 1 and we move to here, it's not our next state. It's immediately our present state, instantaneously our present state. And it's not stable. Yeah, capital Y1 matches lowercase y1, but here's the instability. Capital Y2 doesn't match lowercase y2. So the question is, what happens? We imagine this thing called a race. And we race down this column to this stable state, where y1 and lowercase y1 match where big y2 and little y2 match. At this point, you should be having a full meltdown. This fog should descend on your brain, and it should look something like this. What? I mean, this could just go and go from here to here to here to here and all over the place. I mean, uh, uh, this is like a brain that's having a seizure, right? Or it's, it's a panic attack. I mean, what, what stops it? Why, if, if you've got a Y2 that comes out here and then it, its input is here and then it changes itself and it goes around and around and around in a circle, I mean, there, what's, what's, how do we even think about this? All right, I've calmed down. There are two things that mitigate this chaos, that confine it or constrain it. The first is the reality. Reality is right here in x1 and x2. That's the outside world that's telling our circuit what to do and it's not changing its mind. If our input right here, this is the reality, is 0, 0, that confines us to this. So all that chaos is confined to that column or to this column. So this race right here is confined to this column. So that's the first mitigating factor, constraining factor. The second is our Y2, capital Y2, turns into an input, yes, but it's combined with all these other inputs right here to create the new Y2. And any of these, and the logic associated with that combinatory network, could stabilize this. That's part of the design of these asynchronous sequential networks. So all these other design steps have some uniqueness to them. And if we begin thinking in terms of this kind of a sequential network, then our synchronous networks begin to clock faster. Well, let's get back to our story. We started off right here, and we went like this. And then we went like this, and we had a little panic attack. That's where we're at right now. We're at this stable state. Now we're going to change x2 back to a 0. So we're going to go from here to here, and it's stable. 
We're going to go from here to here, and it's stable. We're also doing this exact same trip through the output. So we started right here at 0, 0, and we went to here and stayed. Then we went to here, and then we raced down to here, and now we're here. And our output is a 1 for the first time. So now what's our last step? x1 changes to a 0. x1 changes to a 0. x1 changes to a 0. And we race back. So we walked a path, we've gone in a circle, we started here, we found some output right here. Is this the only path? No, let's try the second path. Okay, the outside world's changed three times. We've gone from here, raced down to here, gone over to here, raced up to here, and now we're making this third change and we're being driven over into this column. Now here you can see that my big Y1 and Y2 are 0, 0, and they don't match our present state. So what's going to happen is we're going to race up to this 0, 0 state. Because this is 0, 0, we race up to here. And then, because this is not stable, we race down to here again. So that's why this 1, 0 and this 1, 0 match. So we're going to race up to here and then race down to here again. Now x2 is changing to a 0. So we're moving to this state that's stable. And we get an output of a 1 for the first time. And then finally, x1 changes back to here. Our x1 changes back to here. So our output doesn't flicker. And then we race down to here. And we get an output of a 1. Now here's the key thing. This, if this was a 0, then during this race we would have gone from a 1 to a 0 to a 1 and our output would have flickered. Now this is happening at the speed of light and it's not going to impact the human eye. So as long as Z is designed for the asynchronous world, it's probably not going to have an impact. There's very few animals and very few biological systems that respond to a flicker that fast at the speed of light. But if this is being fed into another circuit, that flicker could have a profound impact. Does the project require no flickering? What is the larger scope? What does this circuit plug into? So is this the only path? Is this the only story that could be told? We told two. Have we covered all the major stable states? I look at this and I get philosophical. I start thinking of these stable states as trees, these races as the dirt around the trees, places where you could walk. I start thinking about jazz music and this is the bass drum and these are the brushes. With just two feedback wires, we created all of this. So how do we design our own? Let's get to that. So here we have a different path or story or narrative. It has a slightly different starting point. Right here is the starting and here's the ending. But if we follow the path, you might see some familiar sights. But that's not the major point. The major point is why can't we go from here to here? It's an old one. X1 and X2 can't both change at the same time. Why can't we go from here to here? 
because x1 and x2 can't change at the same time. So those two hops can't be done. The third constraint to stop our panic attacks. OK, draw a minimized state table for this ex excitation table. There it is. I've drawn it. It's no different. But don't think that this is a very difficult stage when we're going down in design engineering. Going up in reverse engineering, we're skipping lots of detail. All right, there it is. And now you're looking at these right here, and you're going, how can we know that? We're, we're reverse engineering. We're going up here. How can we know that these are don't cares? Well, look, these are where the races occur through. It doesn't matter what their value is. They're never going to show up and impact the output. You see, the values that stay all are associated with stable states. C is unstable, therefore it's a don't care. B is an unstable, therefore it's a don't care. A and C are unstable, so it doesn't matter what their value is. But we can predict what the thinking was when in design engineering we're going down through this transition table step. This don't care was replaced with a zero. This with a zero. Now why would these be replaced with zeros? Well, typically we're racing from here up to here, right? So we want no flicker, so that's why that's a zero. Here we're racing down like this. That's why these two are zeros. Here we're racing up to this. That's why it's a one. Let's see. D, we're racing down to here. That's why that's a one. And B's, yeah. OK, so there's a rationale. Now this requirement of a project that there's that there's no flicker can turn into a mess. Every single possible story or narrative, every possible beginning and ending, we might have to think through it to control the flicker. There's several flaws here. This is not a typical state table at this stage in the asynchronous sequential network design. You can see that the don't cares are not reflected here. So maybe this was the starting point of the design process, but I doubt it because that's not typical of asynchronous sequential networks. You're going to see a lot of this where a state loops back to itself. That's a feature of a stable state. And you can see that every single row right here has a stable state. There's A and a stable A. There's B and a stable B. There's C and a stable C. There's D and a stable D. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have an E down here. In fact, you will start adding states like this to correct problems in the asynchronous sequential networks. So don't expect there always to be this loop here. But it's a pretty major feature of most of these asynchronous sequential networks.